Good morning, everyone. This is Curtis Hawks with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. And I'm really excited today. We've got a, a good speaker, Jason Goodrich with Equitrust on the call with us today. He's going to be doing a deep dive into single premium life insurance and the various features and benefits to it. Uh, also, and, you know, it's a very timely message, um, you know, not a uh, not just the leverage that you can get with uh, life insurance, but also the living benefits associated with it as well. November is Long-Term Care Awareness Month, and that is right around the corner. And so single premium life can be a very effective tool for helping show a client how not to spend dollar for dollar on the cost of care and instead leverage pennies on the dollar. So we've got a lot of good stuff that we're going to be going through today. Uh, before we get into that, I did want to take a couple of minutes. I know we've got a lot of people on the call today. And I wanted to chat a little bit about some of the uh, some of the ways that IMS can really truly be a sales partner with you and your business. So, first of which is our new producer bonus program. And if if you're new to IMS, if you're looking at IMS and are, are thinking about joining up, this is a great way to really help you accelerate as you get going with us. And the, the way we, that we design this is that. What we had in mind is no matter where an advisor's at, what their business looks like, we really want to meet you where you're at and help you to get to where you want to be. And so you can see here that as you're producing business with us, there's a variety of different ways that we can partner with you to help you accomplish your objectives. The other thing that I would mention to you as well is if you've got some things that you're doing that are working really, really well for us, a cor or, or for you, a cornerstone of what we do is customization. So if you've got something that's working well for you and you just want to know how we might be able to partner with you on it, talk to your sales director, give them a call, and we can chat through that and see what we can do. Next, we've got our IMS Business Builders. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was our Referred Producer Program. And this, these are probably some of the biggest checks that we cut. Uh, if you're currently doing business with IMS and you like our service, you like what we're doing, give us a call. If you've got somebody that maybe isn't quite happy with the current IMO relationship, send them our way. Uh, not only will you get $50 when they get contracted, but you'll get an additional $100 when they write their first piece of business. And then, and, and, and this is, I think, a, a big differentiator with us. As they write business, you will continue to get checks on a quarterly basis from their production. You don't have to do anything. We'll take care of the agent. We'll provide the service, all those types of things and you're getting checks on a quarterly basis based off of their production. Uh, we also have our marketing reimbursement program, and as many of you have seen over the course of this year, marketing has presented its own set of challenges, and uh, we've put together a lot of uh, creative ways to help you get in front of more people, but we're also seeing that advisors are having to invest some more money into marketing to try and make sure they're getting out in front of that target market. And so our marketing reimbursement program is a great way to double the size of your budget and have us put some tangible dollars into your business to help you get in front of the people that you want to see. Uh, next, I wanted to take a minute and talk about back office support. And, you know, I think when we talk about service, every marketing organization talks about service um, and everybody says they have great service and, and you know, I, I think we've got some of the best service out there, but I really feel like service has been highlighted this year. When you think about the challenges with the insurance companies and them having staff working remote and everything going on with it, the, the necessity for a good team of people to support your business, to push your cases through, to get you the designs that you need, all those types of things, I think it's really highlighted the importance of having a high level of service, and that really has been one of our pillars for 34 years. So if you haven't tested our service out, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, again, I think we're the best in the business. Um, one of the things that COVID's brought on is innovation. And so we do integrate with a number of technology platforms and e-applications have significantly grown over the course of this year. So we, we do integrate with Firelight. I want to make a make a note of that. And then you can see here that we've got a number of insurance carriers that we integrate with. And that's one of the nice things is you can go to uh, our our website and get access to all of our EAP platforms. And in addition to Firelight, we also have iPipeline, which integrates with almost 80 life insurance companies. So we've got numerous ways for you to, if you're running virtual appointments and need to do e-applications, we've got your back on that. We've got a, a, a significant amount of support on that. 
creative marketing solutions. Uh, we have a, a very robust marketing team here to help you. And I, I really think creative is the key word here because as many of you know, things that you would uh, do from a marketing standpoint free COVID, but we don't look quite the same in a post COVID world. And so one of the things that we've done over the course of this year is get very creative on different marketing packages and different ways that you can get in front of prospects. And so one of the services that we offer is a custom marketing analysis. And essentially what we do is we look at what your goals are, what your business currently looks like, what you want to accomplish, what challenges you have. And then we'll put together a custom marketing plan for you that you can implement. And so I would encourage you, if you haven't gone through that process with us and taken advantage of it, to reach out to your sales director and talk to them about it. Uh, we're going into the fourth quarter, so we want to have a really good, strong close to the year. But you also need to be thinking about what do you want next year to look like? And working with our team of experts, they can craft a very good plan that's customized to you in your location based off your target market and give you some recommendations on what makes the most sense to help accomplish your objectives. Um, I mentioned the IMS website here uh, a couple of minutes ago, but it really is a great resource. Whether you're doing e applications, you're running quotes, you need to check rates. We also have a significant amount of content on there. We have a significant library of point of sale, consumer facing pieces on there that you can access. Uh, you do need to be licensed with us to get a login to it. So if you're not, make sure you talk to, your, uh, talk to one of the sales directors over here and they can get you set up. But there's a significant amount of resources on there. Um, software, uh, again, has become a bigger and bigger necessity in today's day and age uh, as we've moved to virtual appointments and so the ability to articulate a variety of concepts in a simple and straightforward manner is critically important and retirement analyzer is one of the software platforms that we use to address that question of how do i make sure i don't outlive my income in retirement and so it does a very effective job of breaking down where all the client's assets are based off of their current strategy what is it going to look like and then what changes need to be made to make sure they don't outlive that income. And so it really gives you the ability to have that crystal ball and create a path forward for that client. Last, I wanted to touch on IMS Wealth Management. We do have an RIA platform, and there's really never been a better time to uh, get into this marketplace and add that license. If, if you're currently an IAR and not quite happy with your current relationship, give Charles and his team a call. They'll be happy to chat with you. And, you know, again, I think this year is all about advancing your business, whether it's through marketing and taking advantage of opportunities, or you have some more downtime to where you're think you've been thinking about picking up a license. It's a great time to do it. It's a great opportunity. And so I would encourage you to uh, reach out uh, to Charles and his team, and they can help you do that. So with that, as I mentioned, we've got uh, Jason Goodrich on the call with us today. He's the regional VP over with Equitrust. And, you know, single premium life has, has significantly grown over the last several years, and it's becoming a bigger and bigger piece of what we do. And I think there's a number of reasons for that, some of, some of which Jason is going to be going through today. But the ability to generate better leverage, yield, and to get assets into a more tax advantage position is a great concept and a great idea for a lot of the population. So Jason, I really appreciate you being on the call with us today and I'll, I'll let you take it over from here. Great, appreciate it, Curtis, thank you. Good morning, everyone, happy Friday. As Curtis said, my name is Jason Goodrich and I'm the National Accounts Manager with Equitrust Life Insurance Company. Uh, first off, I'd just like to thank everyone for taking time away from your schedules this morning to join me. Obviously, we are in some uh, unprecedented times and have been for the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight months. So really appreciate you making time this morning. As Curtis said, what I'm going to be covering today is just an overview of what are two of the most successful and competitive single premium life products in the industry for about the last 10 years or so. Uh, both WealthMax Bonus and Wealth Horizon were reintroduced about a year ago, and we've seen a significant ramp up of sales in these products since that time. Uh, I think you'll see why as we why they've been so popular as we go through the presentation this morning. <clears throat> now, I don't want to take up too much time, so I'm going to try to keep the presentation to around 25 minutes or so and just cover the products and the positioning of the products at a fairly high level. 
Uh, I'm also going to spend some time talking about why I think these products are a great option in the current environment we find ourselves in and why I think they can be a great fit for your current clients that you're already uh, uh, working with. Uh, as we go through, though, write down any questions you have. Curtis will leave a, uh, give you some contact information at the end. You can reach out to your sales director at Ions, and they'd be happy to address any questions. Lastly, let me just thank Curtis and all the great folks at Ions. Uh, Insurance agency marketing has been a top marketing organization with Equitrust for both life and annuity since the very beginning. So we really appreciate their support and their long-term partnership with Equitrust. With that, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Before I get into this stuff, I do want to mention that, you know, with the coronavirus and, and all that stuff, last March, we went to a completely virtual, uh, we went completely virtual as well, too. So we used to require that you meet with your clients face-to-face. -face. Uh, as of March last year, that's no longer a requirement. So basically, with the single premium life product, because it's simplified underwriting and you don't have to take the application in person, you can do everything virtually. You don't ever have to see the client other than to deliver the policy. Uh, we just have a form you complete uh, if, you're, if you're not going to meet the client face to face. So that's just part of our application packet. Curtis had talked about Firelight. We are on Firelight, so you can do the app right through Firelight. Okay, so I, just, I didn't want to point that out. Okay, what I want to talk about uh, first before we get into the specifics of the product is just kind of where I see the positioning of these two products, kind of why they were developed, number one. And then number two, some of the key sales opportunities. Uh, that we've noticed, you know, through the last 10 years where agents are having success in, in different areas. Well, as far as the product positioning, really there's two positionings of it, if I'd say. Uh, number one is wealth transfer. Um, you know, basically if that client has some money that they don't need that they want to pass on to their kids, grandkids, church, charity, obviously it's going to be a great uh, vehicle for that. Uh, let me pull up my laser pointer here. Help you out. Then the second thing is chronic illness. I'll get more into this, and Curtis had touched on it, <clears throat> but we have found, and this kind of surprised us, but we have found that almost half of our sales, the primary selling point of it is the chronic illness benefit, it is as an alternative to long-term care insurance. And we'll get more into that in a little bit. As far as sales opportunities, kind of three key ones where I know a lot of advisors have had a lot of success. Number one is cash equivalents. I, this has been the biggest percentage of money we have got is kept from some sort of liquid account. Uh, as you can see in the screen there, over 19 trillion is sitting in a liquid position. I mean, that's almost as much as the national debt, right? It's a huge, huge number uh, sitting in a liquid position. So, you know, maybe a money market, a savings account, checking account, short-term CD, something like that. Uh, about 80% of our sales comes from what I call a cash equivalent, right? And what's great about it is it's really just a repositioning of that asset. Right. Uh, the term I use and people in the industry use is it's moving money from your left pocket to your right pocket. Right. So that money sitting in a savings account in their left pocket, for example, they move it into the single premium life. They just repositioned it there. They keep all the benefits they had in the savings account, but they also now they add a death benefit and they add the chronic illness benefits. Right. And we'll get more into that too. Second positioning is life insurance. You know, I think sometimes. If a client has an old life insurance policy, it's just assumed that they can't beat it, so it gets overlooked. And that's not always the case. Uh, here's three examples here. Number one, an underperforming policy. Right? Maybe they're in a life insurance policy that hasn't performed how it's illustrated. And maybe it's going to lapse, or maybe it's in trouble, or it's dying on them. Right? They can do a 1035 exchange, add that cash value to Equitrust, and they'll get a paid up policy immediately. The second one is <clears throat> if they're still paying premiums. So, you know, it is performing how it was illustrated, but the clients now, let's say they're 75 years old now, and they don't want to pay premiums anymore. Uh, I have an agency here in Iowa, actually, a group of four agents, and they sold a lot of Transamerica policies 25 years ago to these clients. Well, now these clients are 70, 75 years old. They're still paying 100 bucks a month into them, and they don't want to pay anymore. So they've moved a bunch of these policies over to Equitrust. You know, it wasn't a lot of cash value, maybe seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars, but they would ten thirty-five that over to Equitrust and no longer have to pay premiums. And the third thing with life insurance is chron no chronic illness benefits, right? Maybe the life insurance or the death benefits not that important to them at this point in their life. What's more important to them is, you know, addressing the long-term care need or the chronic illness need, right? So maybe they'll get less less death benefit by moving the life insurance to us, and they'll add the chronic illness benefits, which is their priority. And the third area we see is annuities. <clears throat> uh, you know, if clients have old annuities, 
that they just don't need. You know, maybe they bought this annuity 15 years ago. They don't need it anymore. Uh, they don't want to put in another annuity. It could make sense to, to put that into a life insurance policy. Now, that is a taxable event, so you need to be aware of that. But we do, our, our top agent the last two years, pretty much all of his business with us was moving old annuities into life insurance, uh, even though the client had to pay the taxes. So there's some of the sales opportunities uh, we see. I'll circle back at the end and talk a little more about this. Uh, so just a quick example uh, of kind of how effective this can be for wealth transfer and chronic illness. We had a 60-year-old female here, $100,000, immediately is going to be a 195 death benefit. I'm moving that $100,000 uh, know, CD or whatever into the single premium life. On the living benefit side, same thing, that $100,000 is going to give them $195,000 to help pay for a chronic illness. Okay, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But before I do, though, let me talk about, as I mentioned, there's two products. The underwriting is the same on both products, okay? Uh, it is point of sale underwriting standard to table four except reject. So we either take it or we don't. There's really only two things that involve the client. There's some health questions on the application, and these are knockout questions, okay? So if they answer yes to anything, they would not qualify. So we have a form where you can like pre-qualify your client and just have them complete it. If they answer yes to anything, they wouldn't qualify. If they answer no to everything, then they should qualify. Assuming they qualify and you do the application, there's just a phone interview that you can do point of sale with the client. And once again, you don't have to be face to face with the client, right? You can call into the number and follow the instructions and the interviewer will call your client at that time to do the interview. And the interview is basically just asking the same questions to your client that, that you're already asking in the knockouts. You're just repeating the questions verbally to them, okay? Now, those are the only two things that involve the client. There is never any exams or fluid draws. Um, very rarely an APS. Uh, if the case is $250,000, or excuse me, under $250,000, at the end of that interview, uh, the interviewer will come and talk to you as the advisor, and they'll either approve it or decline it at that point. Right, so right then at the point of sale, you'll get the approval. Uh, and if the case is 250 or above, you'll get a kind of a conditional approval based off of review of an APS. And then Equitrust, we will order the APS review and then contact you after we, we review it. Okay, so below $250,000, approval on the phone, uh, no APS, 250 and above, we will get an APS and every time it'll take a little longer to get the final approval. I'd also mention that. You know, this is only underwritten for life insurance. So it's only mortality underwriting, not morbidity. Okay, so we're not uh, uh, doing the cognitive things they might do when you qualify for, when you're applying for long-term care or something like that. And lastly, real-time notifications. You're going to get the notice right on the phone. You're also going to get an email right away, so you'll know right away of the approval. Okay, the other thing that's the same on both products is the living benefit rider. Uh, or the accelerated death benefit rider. Now, the first thing about this is this rider is included at no charge, okay? It's in most states, and you wanna check with your sales director and I to, to you know, check on your state for sure, but most states have the living benefit rider on it. And once again, there is no charge for it. There's three triggers that would allow the death benefit to be paid out to the client. Number one is if they become terminally ill, we will take 95% of whatever their death benefit is and pay that out to the client tax-free. Second trigger is nursing care confinement. Okay, so that'd be 90 uh, consecutive days in a nursing care facility. If they qualify under that, they have the option to either take 85% of the death benefit in a lump sum, or what most people would do is they would take 100% of the death benefit over three years. Okay, so whatever the death benefit is divided by 36 months, months, that's what they would be guaranteed to get paid each month for those three years. And the third trigger is what we call chronic care, uh, some call it chronic illness. Uh, they have the option with it of 75% of the death benefit in a lump sum, or once again, what most people would choose is 100% of the death benefit, but over five years. Okay, so whatever the death benefit is, divided by 60 months, that's their guaranteed monthly payment. If they were to pass away before the 60 months was up, whatever's left is just paid in the lump sum to the client, okay? As I mentioned, this is automatically included at no charge. Now, if they ever do access it, there is a one-time charge of just $250. And I'm gonna show you an example of this in a second, but 
Uh, main thing is this is included automatically uh, with the policies, and there are these three different triggers that would allow that death benefit to, pay, to be paid out. Now, as long as they take it properly and use it properly, it should also be tax free. Uh, but obviously, you want to you, you know maybe talk to a tax advisor on that. Okay. One more thing before I get into the products a little bit is we do have two kind of unique indices uh, that we added to our single premium life products, uh, ball control indices. There's not a lot of them, I don't think, on life insurance. There are quite a few of them on annuities. Uh, so if you write annuities, you may be familiar with them. So I do want to touch on that. The first one is the Barclays Focus 50. Now, this is exclusive to Equitrust, so it is only available on the Equitrust life and annuity products. Okay. And it's a very simple from a ball control standpoint, I think it's very simple to understand. All it's doing is using these three components. The first one is the 50 lowest volatility U.S. stocks. So it's going to look at all U.S. stocks, whichever are the, have the lowest volatility, the 50 with the lowest, is what it's going to use for the calculation. Now, typically, when you look at the 50 lowest stocks, these are going to be what I call the big, boring companies which actually the big boring companies are very exciting to senior clients and to all clients right now. Just to give you an example of some of the current companies that make up the 50 lowest ball with us, uh, Amazon, Campbell Soup, Colgate, Costco, eBay, Johnson & Johnson, Kellogg, Merck, uh, Verizon, Walmart, Waste Management. That gives you an idea of some of the, you know, some of the companies we're talking about that make up the 50 lowest ball stocks. So it's just going to use those in combination with four different lengths of treasuries, a two-year, a five-year, a 10-year, and a 30-year. Okay, so just those two components, and then we'll use cash to maintain the 5% volatility. Okay, uh, now I'm not going to go into much more on this, but there is a website out there. If you Google Barclays Focus 50, uh, you can find it. It gives a lot more detail. It also has a video that you can show your clients. Uh, but it's a way to you know, diversify within the product. It's a way to get a little more growth potential in the single premium life by using one of these strategies. We'll get more into that in a second. The other one is the S&P Mark V. Uh, this is not exclusive to Equitrust, so you may be familiar with it, but it's also performed very well. It just uses three components along with cash. And three that you're familiar with, it uses equities, commodities, and fixed income. For equities, it uses the S&P 500 which most clients are going to be familiar with. For the commodities portion, it uses gold. And the reason it does that is gold is a very good hedge against inflation. Uh, then the third one would be fixed income would be the 10-year treasury, which people are familiar with. So it just uses those three components along with cash uh, to maintain the 5% volatility and you know, try to get the best return it can by mixing these up the correct way. Uh, also, there is a website for the S&P Mark V where you can see a bunch of historical data, and you can also see um, uh, a video on it. And here I'm just showing you kind of some raw index returns of the S&P 500 compared to the Barclays Focus 50 and the S&P Mark V, going back to 2004. So if you go down here and look at the annualized, you can see the annualized return on the S&P is 6.89, the Barclays 5.79, and the Mark V 5.17. So the S&P actually has the higher return. But keep in mind, these are raw returns. Uh, these don't take into account caps or participation rates. And what you'll see, and you'll see in a second, is the Barclays and the Mark V have a lot higher participation rates. Uh, we have participation rates as high as 140, 150% with these strategies, where the, where the Mark V, you're looking at half of that. Or excuse me, the S&P 500, you're looking at half of that. So if you factor in kind of the participation rates, you would see a lot higher return on these two strategies than even the S&P 500. And we have all three on the product. So I think it's a great idea to diversify between all three. And here you see year to date, you can see the S&P, it's kind of been all over the place, but it's up 6.8 year to date. As of the 16th, the Barclays up 2.8, and marked by 7.18. Once again, though, uh, these participation rates are well over 100, and this is, is gonna be less than 100, right? So it's gonna make a big difference. Okay, so I did want to touch on those strategies real quick. Now let's get, talk a little bit about the products and I'll walk you through a case example. The first product is the WealthMax Bonus and this really is the, I guess, the flagship product of Equitrust. Uh, it came out in 2010. For many years, it was the leading simplified issue single premium life product in the market, I believe. And then we didn't have it for a couple of years and then we brought it back last year. And here's just some quick numbers on it. The issue ages are 45 to 80. Uh, I'd say our average issue age runs around 68 or 69, okay? Premium, minimum premium is 10,000. 
maximum is based off a face amount of 750. So whatever premium gets you to 750 face, that's the most we can take. It is a guaranteed death benefit, right? So it's a single premium guaranteed death benefit to age 121. As a, as a 10 year surrender charge, it does have uh, withdrawals available as 5% free withdrawals uh, after the first year, just one, one a year. Some of the bigger features on it is it does offer a premium bonus. So just a 5% premium bonus, which what that does is it obviously increases their account value, which also increases their death benefit immediately. So their death benefits immediately uh, uh, well above the guaranteed death benefit. The next feature, which I think is what, you know, I talked earlier about, you know, left pocket to right pocket. This is kind of what addresses that is it has a day one return of premium guarantee on it. So that means just what it says. If they put $100,000 in today and something happens two weeks from now and they have to get their money back, they get all the money back, uh, all $100,000 and it's guaranteed. And you'll see that when we look at an illustration. Uh, that's why it works really good for repositioning, you know, savings account money, let's say. Because they do that, they keep that, you know, they like the savings account because they like the guarantee knowing they can get the money, right? That's liquid. So they can move it to this, it's still liquid, but now they have a death benefit, they have chronic illness benefits, they have tax deferred growth, and other things. And then it has these has all three of these strategies that we just talked about. I'll show a case example in a second on this product. Current rates, fixed counts three and a half. The S P has a seven percent cap. Uh, on the point to point, it has a monthly average of a 70% par rate and no cap. And then here's the Barclays and the Mark V. You can see the Barclays has 125% par. The Mark V has 140% par. Now, due to you know rules and regulations, we're, we're required to do illustrated rates based off of the point to point cap. So based off that 7%, which is why 4.6 is the highest we can illustrate. I'm going to show you a supplementary illustration in a second that shows that actually these have performed a lot better than that if you look over the last 20 years, but we are required to illustrate based off of, off of this number. Commission, uh, it is 8% commission up to age 75, uh, seven and a half from 76 to 80. We do have some trail options on it. We have an option B, which pays half up front with a 75 trail. And we have option C, which is just a 1.25 trail for the life of the contract. So a really good trail option on it. So the main highlights of the wealth max bonus are number one, it's going to give a guaranteed death benefit if the goal is wealth transfer. Number two, has the living benefits to address that chronic illness need or the lack of long-term care insurance. And number three, it has a return of premium if something changes, right? And their needs change and they need the money back. They know they can always get it back. Okay, let's walk through a little case example. It's very similar to the type of business we get. We got Carolyn, who's age 60. She has $100,000 in a CD at 2%. Her objective is to leave the money to her two grandkids when she passes. Uh, her concern is health-related expenses during her lifetime, such as medical costs and nursing home. And we're going to give her three options. She can leave the money in the CD and continue to earn the 2%. She can put in an annuity, like a multi-year guarantee annuity at 3%. Or she can purchase the Wealth Max bonus policy. So let's first look at the CD, how the CD will perform at that 2% rate immediately in 10 years and 20 years if she passes. You see immediately, obviously the value is $100,000. At 10 years, it's 116,643. And at 20 years, it's grown to 136,932 at that 2% rate. Uh, and I think we're assuming a 24% tax rate because obviously the CD is gonna be taxable every year. Compare that to the annuity at 3%, Obviously, it's going to grow tax deferred, but it will be taxable at death in most cases. So the death benefit at 10 years would be 126, and in 20 years would be 161. Now, if we look at the wealth max, the immediate death benefit tax free is 195. So whether she passes away immediately, in 20 years, in 40 years, whenever, her beneficiaries are guaranteed to get $195,000 uh, tax free death benefit. Obviously, this is why it makes sense for wealth transfer. Now, just to put some perspective to this, uh, is if that client were to stay in that CD at 2%, it would take them 41 years to get to $195,000. If they were to stay in the annuity at 3%, it would take 27 years to equal the $195,000 immediate death benefit. Uh, I know we have some advisors that have spreadsheets and they kind of calculate these numbers out to present to their clients. It's also something we're working on internally as a supplementary illustration where you'll be able to find out how long 
your client would need to stay in their current financial vehicle to equal the immediate death benefit of the wealth max. Uh, and that's hopefully something we'll have early next year, but time will tell. Okay, let's look at the same example, but Carolyn doesn't pass away, but instead she needs to access it, access the money for while she's still living. So if she becomes terminally ill, she's guaranteed 185,000 tax-free based off that initial $100,000 investment. For nursing care, it's a guarantee of 5409 a month for 36 months. And it's gonna show it right on the illustration. And if she becomes chronically ill, she's guaranteed 3245 a month for five. Wait, that's just for 36 months, that's incorrect. It should say 60 months, right? So the amounts are, the total amount between these two is actually the same. It's just nursing care is taken over three years where if she's under chronic illness, it's taken over five years. I apologize for that, that's incorrect. Uh, but it's 32, 45 a month for five years. If she passes away before the five years, the remainder is paid in a lump sum to the beneficiary. We have a couple nice uh, supplements, I think, in the illustration to go along with this. So using the same Carolyn, Carolyn example, uh, this is a supplement that automatically comes in the illustration. It's called the Power of Guarantees. And what this page is all about is about all the guarantees to Carolyn. Uh, and it's actually, it says guarantee in here nine times in the supplement. So, so it shows right here her guaranteed return of premium. You know, if she were, you know, she's guaranteed to get her money back at any time. Worst case scenario, $100,000. Over here is her death benefit guarantee, $195,000, right? And then here shows the nursing care, the chronic, and the terminal guarantees that we just talked about, the 5410 or the 3246. Okay, this page is worst case scenario for Carolyn. Uh, from all three things, from cash surrender value to living benefits to death benefit, and automatically prints in the illustration. Now, we did add another supplementary illustration that looks very similar, must have a power of guarantees. It's called the life expectancy snapshot. This is an optional supplement that you don't have to put in there. But what this does is instead of looking at the guarantees, it's going to show the non-guaranteed values at her life expectancy. So for Carolyn, age 60, her life expectancy is age 88. So this shows the non-guaranteed values at age 88. So instead of her cash value being 100,000, it's actually 186,895. Instead of her death benefit being 195,000, you know, the non-guaranteed side is 239,226 uh, at age 88. And then here you see the benefits. Keep in mind, the nursing care, chronic, and, and, and terminal are all based off of the death benefit the current death benefit, not the guarantee. So if her death benefit's higher than the guarantee, these numbers are gonna be based off of that. That's why the nursing care here is 6638 instead of 5410, like it was on the previous slide. And this is 3983 instead of 3246, like it was on the previous slide, okay? So the previous slide shows the guarantees, this shows the non-guaranteed side. Okay, and I, I did wanna show this page real quick, because this is, a um, let me pull up my highlighter, make this a little easier, maybe. This is another supplement. Actually, this isn't a supplement. This just automatically prints in the illustration, okay? And it's required. And it shows the S&P 500, and it shows the Barclays Focus 50 that we talked about, and the S&P Mark 5. Compares the three of them over the last 20 years. So it shows the index change, and then it shows what, it, what, the, what the returns are based off of the cap, the current cap or participation rate, okay? So we go down here and we look at the annualized over the last 20 years, and you apply the cap of the S&P, you can see the annualized return with that 7% cap is 4.13 of the S&P 500. With the average, with the average participation rate, uh, with the 70% participation rate, the annualized return is 3.23. Now, if we go over and look at the Barclays, it has a lot higher participation rates. So the return is 5.79. But when you apply the participation rate, the annualized return of the Barclays is actually 7.58, okay? And the Mark V is 7.88. So you can see those products, or those, excuse me, those indices have performed very well over the last 20 years. But keep in mind, we are required uh, by AG49 to use the S&P point-to-point as our basis for illustrations, okay? So when you see an illustration, it's using the S&P number, not the Barclays, or the S&P, or excuse me, or the Mark V number. But I do want to point them out, because I think it's important to point out to your clients that there is a potential for a lot more growth than what they even see on the illustration. Okay, that's the Wealth Max. Now let's look at the other product, which is the Wealth Horizon. 
Let me get out of this real quick. Very similar to the Wealth Max, the basic features. Here's the big difference. With the Wealth Horizon, you do not have the 5% premium bonus and you do not have the return of premium guarantee. In place of that, the client gets a lot higher face amounts and a lot higher caps and rates. So their death benefits higher on the guarantee side and the growth potential is a lot higher. Okay, that's really the only difference between them. And you'll see here on the uh, uh, with the wealth max, the point to point cap was seven. It's nine here, right? And you see the Barclays is 140 here. The Mark Five is 150, right? So you get a lot higher. So you get a lot higher illustrator rates because that nine percent cap, right? So that's kind of the choice for the client. How important is the return of premium? You know, are they willing to give up some on growth, give up some on guaranteed death benefit to get the return of premium? That's really what it comes down to. The other difference is the commission. The Wealth Max pays you 8%, this pays 9%. It pays a little more because it doesn't have the return of premium. It's a little harder sale. So it has the option B and option C. Uh, the, one, the, the option C is the same, 1.25 trail. We have the same supplements. We have the power of guarantees. Now with the power of guarantees supplement on the Wealth Horizon, we don't show cash surrender value because it doesn't have the return of premium guarantee, okay? But it does have, but you can see the death benefit here is 208. On the Wealth Max, for the same example, it was 195,000, right? So the Wealth Horizon, she gets, she would get an additional 13,000 guaranteed death benefit, which means these numbers are going to be higher because they're based off of the death benefit. Same deal with the life expectancy snapshot, right? They're going to be a lot higher. Your cash values for that $100,000 is actually a life expectancy is 248. The death benefit is 318 instead of 208, so way higher which means these numbers are way higher, okay? Okay, all this stuff's gonna be in the illustration. And this is the same deal I just showed you, but, but on Wealth Horizon, comparing the, the S&P 500 versus the Barclays versus the S&P Mark V. Uh, so these numbers are the same. The rates are higher, so you're gonna see we're actually at 8.47 annualized return on the Barclays and 8.43 on the Mark V. So really strong uh, potential uh, um, with those indexes. We also have um, something you can add to the illustration if you want. It's called a product comparison, and it's going to compare the Wealth Max with the Wealth Horizon. What we have found out is during the sales products, a lot of uh, agents and advisors will lead at the Wealth Max because of the return of premium, and that's you know the sales process will, will work towards the Wealth Max. But at the end of the presentation, uh, they may show this side by side to the client. And say, you know, if you're willing to forgo the, the return of premium, here's what your values will look like on the wealth horizon. And it's going to just, com so it just compares the values. And in the early years, the wealth max is actually better uh, on the values in the wealth horizon. But once you get to year 10 or so, you'll see the wealth horizon values and death ups are quite a bit higher than the wealth max. And what we've seen and what I've heard is a lot of clients at this point will flip to the wealth horizon change their mind based off of these values that they see and the potential growth of their death benefit and their chronic illness benefits. So just a nice supplement in the illustration that you can add uh, if you want to show both products side by side. Okay, last thing I want to mention is, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, I think this is a great option for current clients. Uh, obviously, in the environment we're in, prospecting is difficult. Uh, finding new clients is not easy. Uh, and I think this is a great option because it's a great option for your current clients that you're already working with. We already talked about some of this stuff, but I, I think it makes a lot of sense in annual reviews. You know, maybe it's an annual review with an annuity client because we, it has these, you know, you have these potential at review that we talked about. You know, I'm sure you all have clients that have money sitting in a CD or savings account or money market that they really don't need, but they like the security of, and the liquidity of it being there, right? It's a great option to reposition that asset keep the liquidity, but gain the death benefit and the chronic illness benefits. Uh, we talked about the old annuities. You know, maybe they have an annuity from 20 years ago that you can't move to another annuity because it has high minimum rates, caps or something like that, but they don't need it. You know, it could make sense to put in a single premium. And then the different options we talked about with 1035 old life insurance policies into it. Okay, just quickly review, and we'll close it up here. Two products, WealthMax, Wealth Horizon. Wealth Max is really built on guarantees. Return a premium guarantee, uh, where the Wealth Horizon, you give up some of the guarantee, but you get a lot more growth potential, uh, which leads to higher death benefits and higher chronic illness benefits. 
They both offer the accelerated death benefit rider. Uh, they both have a guaranteed death benefit to 121. They have the same underwriting, point of sale underwriting process, uh, and they have both have the unique indices. With that, I'm going to close up and uh, hand off to Curtis. Uh, before I do, though, I would like to just thank everybody for taking time to join me today. Hopefully, you found some value in it and can take a look at what we have to offer. Curtis? Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to drill through that. And I, I hope many of you on the call today see the same thing that we do, which is there's significant opportunity in the SPL market. And again, it can be a great way to generate better leverage yield and to get your assets into your client's assets into a more tax advantage position. Uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the call, we do have uh, Long-Term Care Awareness Month right around the corner. And so we have put together an LTC marketing package that goes through the benefits of SPL and chronic illness benefits. So we are going to start rolling it out next week. But if you'd like to take advantage of that, uh, give us a call, talk to a sales director. They can get that package out to you today. So we appreciate everybody being on the call today and have a good rest of the day and a good weekend. Thank you.